Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You know, yesterday's news about the indictment of the former president got me thinking about the indictment of another president, and that's Jefferson Davis of the Confederate States of America. We forget that he actually was indicted, that it was a huge part of the news in the United States between 1865 and his eventual trial, which, by the way, never happened. I'll save that story for another day. But today, connected to the news from yesterday, I decided to take a look again at the indictment that was written and that was filed in the District of Columbia courts. Uh, the New York Times covered the story in its entirety in its May 27th, 1865 edition. You may recall at this point, it's a couple of weeks after Jefferson Davis and his entourage were captured in Georgia after the fall of the Confederate government, which happened in April, April 2nd, April 3rd, 1865, is when the government flees Richmond and goes down uh, heading south and is captured in Irwinsville, Georgia. So that's a little bit of the backstory. The other backstory that you should know is that the indictment focused on a very, very narrow charge, and that was the June 1864 move by Lieutenant General Jubal Early and his Army of the Valley from Virginia into Maryland. That campaign, though not as, uh, as, as far as news goes, it wasn't quite the story that uh, the Antietam campaign was in 1862 and, of course, the Gettysburg campaign in 1863. But that 1864 campaign was pretty darn big because it ends with the Battle of the Monocacy in Maryland, and then Early's army comes around and heads towards Washington, D.C. There's the Battle of Fort Stevens, which those of you who are students of history know is where Abraham Lincoln goes out from the White House and heads up uh, north to Fort Stevens and is the only sitting U.S. president believed to have come under fire. And in fact, as the reports are concerned, he comes pretty close to uh, taking a bullet. So I want to read you a little bit of the indictment because it's pretty long and it's pretty complex, but I do want to give you a flavor. I think it's interesting to get a sense of the language of the time and how exactly they phrase this. So I'm going to read you two passages from it. So let's start with the top. The United States of America the District of Columbia, County of Washington, to wit, the jurors of the United States of America within and for the County of Washington aforesaid in the District of Columbia aforesaid upon their oath present that Jefferson Davis, late of the County of Henrico in the state of Virginia, yeoman, being an inhabitant of the resident within the said United States of America and owing allegiance and fidelity to the said United States of America, not having the fear of God before his eyes, nor weighing the duty of his said allegiance, but being moved and adduced by the instigation of the devil, wickedly devising and disturbing the peace and tranquility of the said United States of America, to disturb the government of the said United States of America, and to stir, move, and excite rebellion insurrection and war against the said United States of America on the first day of June in the year of our Lord 1864 at the county of Henrico aforesaid in the state of Virginia aforesaid with force and arms unlawfully, falsely, maliciously and traitorously did compass, imagine and intend to raise, levy and carry on war insurrection and rebellion against the said United States of America for the subversion of the government of the said United States of America. So that's that first opening statement that gives you a sense of the enormity of the charges and focusing in on that June 1864 advance. 
here's the other passage, which comes just a little bit lower down. It says, uh, Davis, quote, did unlawfully, maliciously, and traitorously order and command a great multitude of said insurgents and false traitors who were then and there to wit at the county of Henrico aforesaid, in the state of Virginia aforesaid, on the day and year last aforesaid, unlawfully and traitorously assembled and banded together to a great number, to wit, to the number of 20,000 persons and upward, and who then and there acknowledged, recognized, and obeyed him, the said Jefferson Davis, as their leader and commander-in-chief, as aforesaid, but whose names are to the jurors aforesaid unknown, to march and proceed in a warlike manner, that is to say, with drums and colors, with cannon, muskets, carbines, swords, cutlasses, and other warlike weapons, as well offensive as defensive, from the said county of Henrico in the state of Virginia, aforesaid, to the county of Washington, aforesaid, in the District of Columbia, aforesaid, and within the jurisdiction of this county, unlawfully, maliciously, and traitorously, to levy and carry on war against the said United States of America for the subversion of the government of the said United States of America and to enable the said insurgents and false traitors to march and proceed to and invade the said county of Washington and there to levy and carry on war against the said United States of America for the subversion of the government of the said United States of America and to aid and abet them in doing so. So there you have it, a couple passages from that original indictment that appeared in the New York Times on May 27th, 1865, a blaring massive headline across the top of the newspaper uh, sharing the news. And so there's a little bit of the indictment to give you a sense of that narrow charge and uh, specifically pointing out Jefferson Davis's role. So that's what we have for today. We'll see you next time on the trail.